webinar. As you all know, Greenify is a green home energy upgrade loan. And over the next hour or so, we'll find out more about this product and how it offers people the chance to reduce their carbon footprint and live in a more sustainable home in a more sustainable way. In fact, that's the overriding theme really of tonight's webinar, sustainability, and what we all can do as individuals to embrace it. In a short while, I'll be talking to somebody who offers the Greenify loan and a homeowner who availed of it. And we'd like you to take part in the conversation too. At the bottom of your screen, there is a Q&A button. Click on that button and type in any question you may have and we'll do our best to get through as many of them as possible. But first, I'd like to introduce you to Finbar O'Shea, CEO of Bantry Credit Union. Thank you very much, Helen. Um, so yes, Finbar O'Shea here this evening, just for a few moments. And while I'm CEO of Bantry Credit Union, I'm speaking more in my capacity as one of the working group um, who have put together and are behind the Greenify loan product. So you can see it up there on your screens in front of you. There are 12 credit unions currently offering uh, Greenify, and I'm really speaking as a representative on behalf of the, of the 12 of those. Um, the purpose of this webinar is uh, kind of to echo a little bit what Helena said. It's, it's really a sharing of information and an awareness raising around greenification, the journey that we all need to make to make our homes more energy efficient to make and to live our lives more sustainably. So what is Greenify? Um, you see it up there, it is deceptively straightforward, and apologies, but there is one little typo in there, but that's all right, we'll correct that, and that's the part that will stick in everybody's mind. There is no minimum amount. So it is a green finance, a home energy upgrade loan, or a green home improvement loan, for any amount up to €75,000. Uh, its duration is up to 10 years, and the interest rate is 6.5% or 6.7 APR. It is effectively our home energy upgrade loan um, for, for the personal market. Um, so there you see it again, uh, it's a home energy upgrade loan to fund any of the purposes. So anything that complies or anything that constitutes uh, a home improvement works of a green nature, and they're all listed out there in front of you, or some of them are listed out there in front of people, wall insulation, vatic insulations, window doors, heating controls, shallow retrofit, up to deep retrofit anything and I think one of the things we're learning um, as we get more experienced at this is that um, most people will, will go on a journey and that's why I talk about greenification. Rarely will people, uh, not, not so frequently will people begin and set out to do the entire deep retrofit project in one fell swoop. If they can afford it, great, or if they have the means, great. But more typically what we're finding is people are on this journey, some passport. So you start with the, the low hanging fruit, and it moves on to more and more steps on that greenification journey as bit by bit the home is made uh, more energy efficient. Um, key principles, and this will be familiar to the credit union people at the, at the meeting, uh, keep it simple, keep it local, and the third one, keep it real, authentic and genuine. So Greenify is a second loan offering from collaborative finance, and the first one of which is much more familiar to people, is Cultivate. And these are fundamental principles. They're deceptively simple. That's the case, simple as they are in the first one. Um, but they're just born out of the essence of credit unions. It's keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate. Keep it local above all things. Keep it local, keep it personal. And then the fourth one, which is particular, I know it's third there, but keep it personal, I would, would add in as well. Keep it real, authentic, and genuine. That speaks to the ethical nature of credit unions. It's not just a glib phrase whereby, you know, we've identified a gap in the market or identified uh, an opportunity uh, and have decided, okay, this is gonna be the product by which we will avail of this market share. That's not what motivates credit unions. It's the ethical um, community spirit and that, that drives credit unions and that is core to greenify and cultivate. There's just one more little point I want to make as a kind of a, a, a the name of our the name of this company is collaborative finance and the key to its purpose is in the word collaboration. So I'm just very briefly going to touch on that and I by saying the individuality of credit unions in many ways it's a double-edged sword. It's our strength and our weakness. The individuality born out of being governed by a local board of directors by being rooted in our community. That's what gives us our values. That's what keeps us authentic and rooted and responsive and committed. But 
in a complex world, in an increasingly complex world uh, of technology and the like, that individuality makes it difficult for individual credit unions to deliver what they should. So it's true collaboration uh, that we can achieve our potential. I'm going to finish on this note. 12 credit unions uh, collaborating together have managed to host this annual webinar for two years. And we've managed to bring this product to, to our communities. But we need to move much beyond, further beyond the 12. We need genuine cross-sector collaboration so that the entire credit union family, the entire credit union movement, is delivering one unified green loan offering to the Irish market. So thank you very much, Helen. I will pass back to you now. Thank you very much, uh, Finbar. I'd now like to invite Jennifer Carl McNeil, Minister of State of the Department of Finance with responsibility for financial services, credit unions and insurance to say a few words. Thank you, Helen. And hello, everybody. Great to great to be here and to contribute to this. And thank you to Finbar. Uh, thanks so much for inviting me to join you. I'm so delighted to. Your timing for the webinar is just impeccable, as of course, you know, this week is Climate Finance Week in Ireland. And there was a series of events for global financial professionals centred on transition finance, biodiversity finance, and of course, financing Ireland's Climate Action Plan. And just let me tell you how proud I was to be able to talk to them about the great inroads made by credit unions over the past last two years and helping local homeowners transition transition finance uh, to a near net zero future through the Greenify home loan and the practicality of being able to deliver for individuals with their transition needs and what they're trying to do. Um, it's, you know, we need to talk to as many people as possible about green, green home energy products available on the markets by credit unions and green loans play an absolutely crucial loan role in enable people to retrofit their homes and uh, increase in sustainability for us all. And I really want to commend you because you have recognised the challenge that people face and provided a solution for that. Uh, but really recognise, you know, everyone for playing their part and helping achieve the climate action goals, but really deliver for your members, especially the 12, 12 credit unions offering specifically the Greenify loans. And, you know, we have this conversation in this webinar, not just in Climate Finance Week, but at an absolutely essential moment for our for our global challenge, for a, a very important time in our history. It's very clear to everybody that the sci from the science that the effects of climate change and environmental degradation are massive threats to us all. You know, it's absolutely indisputable that the effects of climate change are happening now extreme heat waves, droughts, wildfires, and 2023 virtually certain to be the warmest year on record since the records began in the mid 1800s. And we see that in our own community. Only in last month in Cork and in the Southeast, we've seen the damage to livelihoods, uh, the live damage to people's homes too. So there's very sense of self from the scale of flooding that has happened uh, as a result of extreme weather events. And we have to recognize that and we have to try and help uh, and address that for the future. And Ireland is committed, as you know, to playing its part in tackling climate change. It's not going to be easy for anybody, but it's, it's it, we, are we are committed to doing it. And we have placed that commitment on a legal basis to, by, to have our greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 and reach net zero by 2050. And you know what, it is not, it is not that far away. It is not that far away. It's twenty, you know, it's 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 twenty seven years from now, and uh, you know, we all know in our lifetimes that's probably not 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 very long. So, how do we get there? Obviously, yeah. we have the climate action plan, uh, which is a serious plan that helps retrofit five hundred thousand homes to the B or B two standard to support sustainable farm practices, enabling farmers to lower their carbon footprint, decarbonize industry and support decarbonization technologies and working to support more sustainable transport like electric vehicles and all of the grid infrastructure that's important around that. And I think credit unions, you know, crucially, as in all things, let me say, have a huge role to play in the community, help have a huge role to play in helping the community, helping businesses and helping members to make their transitions. Um, you are making lending, green lending accessible and you're making it affordable for communities and for households in Ireland. Uh, and it's a, it's it's increasingly important part of, of the business model as well for success. It's a, it's important from a market and from a financial perspective, as well as from the huge social and community good that it does. And you are a natural partner, a natural partner to the government's agenda, uh, to the government's ambition to support the climate change agenda or, or uh, 
Credit unions were appointed Sustainable Development Goal champions uh, by the Department of Environment, Climate and Communications for 2023 and 2024. Uh, and a big part of that is about knowledge sharing and embedding sustainability into every aspect of our operation and community. And Greenify, for those who don't know, started as a collaboration with nine credit unions, expanded to 12 credit unions, offering affordable, accessible green lending uh, to communities across Ireland. And what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? What do people do? They, they upgrade their heat systems, they install insulation, they install solar panels, upgrade doors and windows, making life ultimately better and more comfortable for them, but crucially making a big change, a big uh, change to their, their household sustainability and carbon, carbon output. And, you know, without this sort of lending, without this sort of support, how do people do it otherwise? Like, fine, there are grants available for government, but how do you match the funding and how do you deal with the practicality of that? And how sustainable and, and low cost can that funding be? And this Greenify model is a simple, accessible model that answers so many of those questions for our people. And so I'd love to see the number of credit unions involved in this. I'd love to see it grow. I'd love to see more credit unions identify with the collaborative model that is Greenify if they'd like to. I know from credit unions around the country that many are trying to find ways to help their communities improve energy efficiency, reduce carbon emissions within their common bonds. Um, I have visited credit unions working closely with the SEAI, as I've said, managing the grants, supporting people with the other part of that. But I think, do you think that we can do more? And I think with the credit union brand, I would so love to for people to think they think of the credit union brand. It's an absolutely trusted brand, but I'd love to think for them to think of it for credit for, for green loans as much as they think about it for cultivate and other products but this this product this uh, green lending product arenify is a real stalwart it's something that i adore pointing to and being able to champion in every possible way uh, but we know that green products are in demand and from a market perspective that has to be met um, we know that uh, budget 2024, what the government is doing, we have allocated an extra 380 million euros from the carbon tax to support the just transition, to support the SEAI grant schemes, to help with warmer home projects. And, you know, you, you know them, you don't need me to list them. I, I know that they're there available for people in different credit unions um, separate to uh, personal lending for retrofit. I'd also encourage the model of lending to SMEs, lending to our SMEs, because this is the, the transition that SMEs make is going to be absolutely crucial for them to be able to be suppliers to bigger businesses for the future. And we want our SMEs to thrive. And in order to do that, they are going to need to make the same transitions that households are making. So if there's a way in which, you know, credit unions can step more into that SME lending or green SME lending, there's obviously a huge opportunity there. So sustainability for all of us, you know, it's a, it's a journey, not a destination, but it's one that can't come quickly enough. And yet we have massive changes to make to our lives that, that are very inconvenient changes. And we understand that. What the credit union is doing, credit unions are doing through this model, through the Greenify loan, is standing by the community, standing by their community as they try to make that very difficult transition. These small steps, they're not small if you're retrofitting your home, but it's its the collective its the collective effort of all of these small steps, of all of these efforts that help us to move as a community in the right direction and make a really meaningful difference. I, I'd love to just thank you so much again for including me today, for, for including, uh, for, for having this webinar at this really important time. In two weeks time, I'm going to COP28 uh, I think I'm the one of the first finance ministers to go from here, and it's to demonstrate Ireland's commitment to sustainable finance, to Ireland's political voice in sustainable finance. I will be talking about the credit union movement in that way, the democratization of, of finance and being able to reach it easily, quickly, and for green for green products. So I'm so glad to be able to, to speak to you this evening, and I can't wait to watch the panel discussion. So thanks so much for having me. That's great. Uh, thank you, Minister. And I know it's a busy night uh, in the Dáil tonight and you're going to do your best uh, to stay with us, but you may have to abandon us at some stage. But uh, thank you very much uh, for that. And now to give our keynote address, I'd like to welcome Pat Kane, who's Chief Sustainability Officer at Pragmatica and founder of Reusey. Hello, Helen. Hello, everyone. Just want to say I'm very jealous of the Minister going to COP28. That will be incredible. High hopes there. Good evening all, um, my name is Pat Kane. I'm here to talk to you about the power of one because all we heard by Finbar and the minister is very good, very positive. However, we need to start at home. 
we need to start with ourselves. Uh, we need to buy in, basically, to use, I suppose, a more financial term. So if we go to the next slide, please, um, just to introduce myself briefly, I come from the corporate world, and then maybe six, five years ago, I joined the sustainability movement. Um, I launched my business, Reusey, um, a, a one-stop shop for sustainable living products here in Dublin. Um, and then most recently, I also launched my own consultancy, supporting businesses from small businesses to large corporations on improving their green credentials. It's called Pragmatica. Um, I write, I feature on a, a few different media vehicles, and the idea is always to promote the power of one, which means that collectively, if we were to adopt better habits, we could indeed make a difference. And obviously, all we're talking here today is about positive change and creating that collect collective movement that will hopefully enable us to lead um, a more sustainable society. So why are we here? We are here because there are many of us, uh, and most of us have been has been have been affected by climate change somehow. Um, in the past, I guess we were thinking that you know the below the equatorial line was where the problem, you know, uh, when when things were happening, right, where where droughts or wildfires or whatnot. But now we know it's everywhere. We have all been somehow affected. It could have been directly, you know, um, storms and floods like we've seen in Cork, um, which could potentially be linked to climate change. Um, it could be down to prices, uh, prices of petrol, prices of basic commodities. So we have all been affected pretty much. And we have a very tight timeline. We have 2030 to reach this temperature, I suppose, rise um, rise limit of 1.5 degrees. So today I'm here to provide you with a bit of context, inspiration and action. I like to think of sustainability as the new normal. You know, when I look back to when I started as an individual, even which was over a decade ago, trying to live more sustainably, sustainability was never on the front cover of the papers. It would certainly not be on Netflix as a documentary. Now, fast forward, you cannot escape it. It's everywhere and for good reason. So we'll crack on. We'll, we'll go into what sustainability actually means. I think it's very normal for us to come across several definitions of sustainability, and that's because there's not one common definition to the term. Um, when I was studying, when I was back in college, learning about sustainability, I guess, I came across this one, which is a very common one, very, very much used everywhere, which in a nutshell says that we are going through life without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs, basically. Basically, however, there is something missing there. Can you guess? If we were in a room, I would certainly ask you, but um, I will tell you what the answer is on the next slide. It's us humans. We are missing from that definition in the sense of before anything, we need to ensure that we are okay. In very simple terms, that's what I'm trying to say. We're trying to ensure a safe and a just space for all of us to thrive. I go around saying that when we thrive, our planet thrives. And that's definitely um, the case. I'm sure you've heard my accent. I like to say, you know, in a jokey way, I am from County Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And using Brazil as the example, um, you have people, you have folks living in extreme poverty, you know, literally cardboard houses um do you really think they're thinking if their food is organic or if you know who made my clothes they're not they're trying to eat to dress themselves and their families and basically exist so how can they possibly be thinking about of our about our planet and our climate challenges they can't and they are not so first and foremost we need to ensure that this is a safe and just space for all of us when we think of sustainability, a lot of lot of things come to our minds, right? And um, a lot of the things I am prompting them there, mostly related to the environment, to the natural world, I guess. And um, if we were again in one room, I would be asking what words come to mind. And usually what I hear is recycling, you know, littering, um, the ocean, our forest and whatnot. And that's all very well and good. But if we go into the next slide, we will realize that, you know, sustainability is 
much broader than our nature, our natural world. Um, back in 2015, the UN, together with heads of state and members of civil society, came together and put together the 17 goals, which are called the Sustainable Development Goals. In there, you will find, if we click again there for me, please, you will find your usual suspects like life below water, life on land, climate action, and energy very relevant to today's conversation. But you will also find conversations around health and well-being, gender equality, reduced inequalities, responsible consumption and production. Again, very relevant for this week with Black Friday happening. Um, these are areas that do not necessarily come to mind when you think of sustainability, right? They are not related necessarily or directly to the natural world, um, but they are as important uh, as everything else. So if we pick number 10, reduced inequalities, and I'll take a minute just to talk about that. You know, I like to say that companies, organizations everywhere, everyone is talking about diversity and inclusion. But what does that really mean? It's not a tick the box exercise. It's not that something for June when we have pride and all of that. No, I'm always saying diversity is always, it's almost like you are invited to a dance. Inclusion, you're invited to dance. So are we dancing? You know, that's a question we have to ask our, ourselves and our teams, our colleagues, you know, are, are they dancing or just they are sitting waiting for their chance? You know, so this is something that we don't necessarily think of when we think of sustainability, but extremely relevant if we truly want to achieve a more sustainable society. We go to the next one, please. The reason, of course, why we're doing all of these is because, because we don't have another planet to move to. I like to joke that we are not Elon Musk and we are not, you know, that rich that we can fly to the moon or somewhere else and build a house there. This is the only option and we need to make this work. So moving on, I want to talk about Ireland. Um, we'll go on to the next one, please. Ireland, uh, the generation of waste in Ireland is closely, I suppose, linked to economic activity and consumption levels. Over the past decade, more or less, we have been feeling very comfortable with the throwaway culture. We have we have, uh, I suppose, welcome companies that do not necessarily encourage sustainable consumption, right? We are very used to that linear approach to consumption. We take, we make, we take, we bin. So things are bought, things are used, things are going into the bin. So obviously there is a transition needed in there and that's the transition to the circular economy where we find better ways to maximize the resources that are already out there. I'll move on. Also, on that note, over the past five years, household waste, waste has grown by 27%, which is the equivalent waste, weight of a super tanker, which is the reason why I have that picture there. So there is a very important, I suppose, uh, point to highlight as well. It all starts at home, even before we start looking outside at our businesses and, and whatnot. In back in 2015, a research was released and we looked at Ireland as the number one producer of plastic waste per capita, not in general, in the within the EU. Um, and according to Voice Ireland, just in 2021, we are still carrying that not so great medal of the top producers of plastic waste. And that's not to mention food waste or any sort of other waste. We're still not quite there when it comes to recycling. These are well-known facts. Uh, we're highly reliant on incineration. And we have a littering problem, you could say, with cigarette butts, for example, something so small, but you know, so dirty, representing the majority of litter we find out there. So we're not saying that you know everything's lost and it's all doom and gloom. When I look at that, I look at plenty of opportunities for us to do better. And I know our government together with the EU and, and the, the, the European Green Deal uh, are working very hard to try and make this a reality. There's clearly a lot going on. We have the circular economy bill going and I for one have high hopes for everything that's going on behind the scenes. Um, so bringing it to life, I suppose, to, to our lives in general and on our day to day. I'll move on then. Uh, I want to introduce you to, and if that's okay, we can click one more. 
I want to introduce you to seven hours of sustainability. As a matter of fact, I would have added one more there, which is rethink. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, as, uh, as someone who works in and with and is surrounded by sustainability all day, every day, you know, um, sustainability professionals like to come forward and talk about the seven hours of sustainability, which is what? It's exactly what you're seeing in front of you with in in the order in the in order of priority we're starting with refuse yeah the idea is that as we go about our days we're trying to refuse we're trying to not generate any waste we're trying to say thanks but no thanks and bringing it to energy we're trying for example to turn the heating off when we leave a room simple we're just refusing the generation of waste being it energy water food or any sort of materials after that, we're looking at reduce. We're trying to make decisions that decrease the amount of waste generated. We still have to dress ourselves. We have to eat. We have to feed our, our families. We have to have showers and whatnot. That's great. But how can you do that in a most optimal way? Yeah. How can you go about your life? So being it, buying from a package free shop, there are plenty of those around Ireland right now, thankfully, all the way to not leaving hot tap running, um, you know, or trying to swap to LED bulbs to try and save on energy, reducing that consumption, reducing also impacting your pocket positively. We're going to reuse and repurpose. We're trying to think before we get rid of rubbish. Reality is, guys, there's no away. We're not throwing everything, anything away. We're just sending it somewhere else, right? So what do we do with things that we no longer need or want? Can we find ways to repurpose those things? Can we rehome those things? These are very important conversations, I guess, that we can have. We're then going to repair. There is an excellent government funded website called repairmystuff.a. Uh, in there, you'll find plenty of information of how to repair stuff, anything you can possibly can think of. It's a great little resource and I would highly recommend you to use. And the same goes for lastly, and only lastly, recycle and rot, which stands there for compost. Recycling is the last resort. You know, I would love to see more campaigns from the private sector, and the public sector, all about um, recycling, trying to reduce our reliance on recycling, because that means we are getting people to refuse, to reduce, to reuse, to repurpose and to repair. And only then, and if there's nothing else you can do with a certain material, then fine, you recycle or you compost. And then what you do to do that properly, you learn the rules. There is a fantastic, again, government-funded website called mywaste.ie that I would highly recommend you to have a look. They present the general rules of recycling and composting really well. And uh, if you have, of course, any other questions, you can also always contact your waste collector um, company. They will be happy to help. I have no doubts. I've been contacting them for years now. If we move on, I just want to leave you with a few key takeaways, I guess. Talking back to my eighth, I suppose, R, and that is rethink. It's trying to rethink the way we go about our lives. It's trying to literally look at everything we do through a sustainable lens. So trying to do better, generate less waste and generate, I suppose, a positive impact on society. Next up, we have... Um, planet concerns and beyond. I hope that's clear now to those who maybe didn't, were not quite familiar with the concept. Sustainability goes way beyond nature. It Nature is an incredibly important part of it, but there are other elements in there as well. So when you think of sustainability and, and you think I am not a nature person, you don't have to be only a nature person to take part. It's for everybody. Next up is no longer a trend. Sustainability is here to stay. It's not a matter of if or but when. So thankfully, it is here to stay and we need that to stay, right? Next up, we have progress over perfection. We know that when it comes to, say, for example, the Greenify grants and, and the supports, I suppose there's plenty you can do. But the reality is you can't do everything, certainly not all at once. So what can you do first? It's always trying to find progress areas. What can you do better? And look at your own life. You are not competing with anyone. You're competing with yourself, but your yesterday self. And lastly, of course, I'm back to my point, um, and I sound like a broken record, but there is barring one. 
You know, it's about you making changes and a neighbor watching, a uh, business a colleague watching and trying to get it and trying to inspire as many uh, as possible around you. So with that, I'll leave you. And I'm sure we're going to have Q&A after. At the end, we have the panel. So looking forward to all of that. Please reach out if you have any questions. That's my social media handle there. Thank you. That's great. Thanks a million for that, Pat. Plenty of food for thought there. And unfortunately, the minister has had to leave us. Uh, she's been called to a vote in the dole. Uh, so she sends her apologies. Uh, so Pat, you're staying with us for the panel discussion. And we're also joined by Trace Conway. Trace is CEO of Cavan Credit Union and Porik Cal, who recently upgraded his home thanks to a Greenify loan. And just to remind you all again, the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen is there for a reason. And it's there so you can ask us some questions. Questions. And we really would encourage you to take part uh, in the discussion, uh, collaborate with us as much as possible, and we will do our best to get through as many of the questions as possible. Uh, Trace, I'm going to come to you first. Um, Greenify is still a relatively new product. It was only launched in uh, 2021. Um, over the, the intervening years, has demand for the product grown by much? Uh, it absolutely has, Helen. Um, that's something we've very much seen in our credit union. We joined the credit union financial year ends at the end of September. So we had just joined in our new financial year in 2022, small amount. Uh, this year, it was 3% of our loans. Um, and we've had a very strong demand for the first two months of this financial year. So in just over a year, we have done 1 million in loans. We've given 50 people Greenify loans pork being one of them this evening um, and you know it's fantastic uh, the minister made a very good point um, as credit unions we have to be sustainable as well our business model has to work for us to be here to help our members and Greenify is a, a new addition and a great part of that and we definitely see that growing and um, it's one of those things I suppose that snowball effect as people get it and it works well they'll mention it and um, so, yeah, it's been very, very positive for Cavan Credit Union. And, and, hopefully, and our mem hopefully our member will say similarly in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll see what Porik has to say about it. Um, and, and as well as that, I know it's something Finbar touched on. There, there is a preferential uh, interest rate with the Greenify loan. But people might wonder, do you have to be an existing member of your credit union to avail of the loan? Uh, you certainly don't have to be an existing member to inquire about it, uh, to learn about it and see if you can apply and qualify in that. But if you are, if you apply um, to draw down a Greenify loan, yes, you must become a member. But nowadays that is ext extremely straightforward, can be done online, um, you know, it can be done as part of the process. There's nothing, there's no hindrance and this thing of having to have so much savings or so many weeks or that, that is a thing of the past in credit unions. So to become a member, to draw down a Greenify loan is all done as a simple, straightforward process. And one of the things we all look at now when it comes to looking at houses is the BER, the energy rating of a house. Do you look at the BER of the house that somebody wants to upgrade or do you expect that BER to improve as a result of the upgrade? Yeah, I, I, you definitely, um, was the homeowner will expect it to improve. But um, to go back to it was said by Finber, it was repeated by the minister and it comes through and what passed. This is all about taking small steps. So you may get a Greenify loan for a small amount for insulation. Um, you know, it, it doesn't have to be a deep retrofit that's going to bring you up several alphabet letters on the VER uh, range. And it's certainly not something that we require or insist upon or that that's to the homeowners. So um, it, it isn't a requirement for us. We have deliberately tried to keep Greenify. It is a green loan. It is for energy efficiency to your home. And it must be, as you said, there is a good rate. So it must be works for that. Um, but as to what those works are, that's a matter for the homeowner. Great. OK, thanks, uh, Trace. Porik, I'll come to you now. You're one of the 50 uh, people who availed of the Greenify loan from Cavan Credit Union. And uh, you bought an old house, uh, almost 100 years old. And like an awful lot of people who buy old houses, there was a lot more work involved than you expected at the beginning. There certainly was, Helen. Yeah, um, I'm smiling about it now. I wasn't smiling maybe during the process, but... Um, 
Yeah, it's a, it's a, it was a lovely home. It's in a, an area that I grew up in, so it was a home. You're under it, Salon at Porrick. It's a beautiful home. We're looking at it here now. Some of the images have come up. It's a beautiful, beautiful home. Yeah. Um, yes, it's, it's yeah, it's in the local area. So it was one kind of I was familiar with, and um, when the opportunity um, came to, um, you know, be able to purchase it, we were delighted to to get our hands on it. I suppose, and um, from uh, I suppose. Uh, just a quick glance at it. It looked really good and everything looked good. And then when he kind of delved deeper after we had purchased it, you know, it emerged as it does a lot of old homes that there was a lot more to it than maybe initially um, expected. Just when Therese was talking about um, BEO ratings as part of the purchase, there has to be a BEO rating done on the house and it didn't even register on the on the A to F. I think it was a G or a H. And. Um, okay. So it was, <laughs> it was certainly work to be done, and we're glad to say now after the work, we actually had a test on there recently, and it's at eight two rating now. So wow. a huge, yeah, a huge jump up, and I'm really happy with that because obviously um, the structure of the house itself, you know, it is still very old. It's done a lot of work and a lot of upgrades, but yeah, we're delighted to be able to have that uh, rating. And while the number itself, of course, isn't important, you know, it does reflect the the comfort that we have in the house now and then um, the efficiency. That we see in in the bills or um and that so yeah we're delighted with that but yeah certainly a, a bigger project than I expected initially a, a remarkable achievement particularly considering the house was listed to uh to get it to A two um so well done uh the the, the greenify loan then that you um availed how did you first hear about it um I actually can't remember <laughs> to be honest um um my wife. Um, and myself are both from the town so we obviously know a lot of people around Cavan and um, I'd say it could have been mentioned to us so we could have been talking to the credit union we were credit union members so it could have been a post or something like that. but actually unfortunately I, I can't give you an honest answer to that question but um, we, whatever way we found out about it we were delighted that we did um, and you know Fimber and uh, Theresa both mentioned about I suppose the focus that they put on serving the community but it was so easy to deal with them like it really was I think we had one inquiry call and one meeting and, and that was it we, we were good everything was done uh, really efficiently really professionally and we were just delighted with it and um, you know we had as I said a lot of difficult steps in the process in terms of um, purchasing and, and uh, renovating the house but um, accessing the Greenify loan was definitely not one of them. Um, it was probably the simplest thing and easiest thing we did the whole way through. Um, so, yeah, definitely credit to everybody involved at the at Cabin Credit Union for that. And what upgrades did that loan cover? Um, well, the big one was the heating system. So that was that was huge. Um, not very, um, you know, attractive looking um, piece of equipment. You can see it there in one of the pictures. It just looks like a... A big, a big rectangle, I suppose. Um, but there's a lot going on on the inside, and um, it connects on the ground with the ground source heat pump. So that was a, a huge undertaking in terms of installation because the the pipes actually go feet underground and a meter apart, and they run 250 meters. Um, the the nice green grass there in the other picture that was all dug up for um the installation of all those pipes. So we had no garden for the installation, and then. I had to have to get it all back again, but um, it draws I think the first nine or ten degrees of temperature from from the ground, and um, so you don't have to you know put the energy into heating up that initial um nine to ten degrees, and then it's only thereafter you know your next nine or ten degrees that you actually have to put energy into into heating. So I suppose if you're at you know nineteen or twenty degrees, it's, it's about only half the energy required as it would have been. Um, and that's my basic understanding. Obviously, somebody might correct me on that, but it's been very efficient for us anyway. Um, I said it's not a very attractive piece of kit or anything, but that is the main power of the whole heating system of the house. And then alongside that, we, we thankfully have money left over from the loan and we put extra insulation, um, especially in the attic. Again, not something that's very visible, but again, something that was uh, has been very effective. Right. And obviously it's uh, A2 rating. Uh, it's an incredibly comfortable house to live in. And uh, I was just about to ask you the question and great minds think alike. There's another question that has come in from uh, one of our audience saying, what are the electricity costs to run the system? Or do you know how they might compare to a more traditional boiler system? Yeah, um, so uh, I suppose it'd be hard to, I wouldn't throw out figures just because it wouldn't be comparable maybe with houses of different sizes, but um, it is powered by electricity, the ground source heat pump. So 
um, we get one bill, essentially one electricity bill, and that's the electricity for the house and the heating. Um, and compared to our previous house, which was just a three bed semi detached timber frame house, it's um, very little difference. And um, to be honest, that house was heated just with your standard um, oil or gas, gas oil, actually. But um, despite you know the fact that this house is easily twice as big, um, the bills are are very little in difference. So it's slightly higher, obviously, with the increase in interest. So there's not that much difference, and um, than what we have. Yeah, yeah, and it's only one bill as well, which is great. And um, the the previous house had heated up really quickly, but the walls <laughs> also let the heat out equally as quick. So, um, yeah. And um, it's definitely it's definitely very comfortable. And I said we've nothing to compare it with because if we put the, the system in early in the renovations, um, but um so I couldn't compare where it was to before in the house, but I, I think speaking to other people with um super size home it definitely compares very favorably. Right. Thanks, William. Uh, Porik, and uh, I know as we, we see you there, Trey's in the house, you look like somebody who didn't want to leave. <laughs> uh, it's an absolutely beautiful house, so well done to yourself and your wife. Um, I know you put a lot of work into it, and it's it's yeah. a credit to you. Um, Pat, I might come to you, you now, and it's one thing that we touched on uh, with Porik was, I suppose, that the benefits of, of the work he did. Obviously, it's a more comfortable house, and obviously, it's a much more cost efficient, um, so financially more sustainable. But a knock on benefit of that, and sometimes it may even be an unintended consequence of the actions, is it's more environmentally sustainable. So sometimes you might start down a particular journey for a particular reason, but there are other benefits there that you may not be aware of. Yeah, no, absolutely. Sustainability is certainly a great way to uncover cost efficiencies. So obviously, I don't have to talk about energy, I guess, you know, for a covered the whole thing really well it looks incredible by the way congratulations um but you know everything you do if you're looking into potentially buying furniture for your house second hand or clothing for your children or if you are shopping less but more often which means that things don't go to waste you know so we are very much used to do a big shop on a Sunday, right? Everybody goes the and, and does the big shop. That is a waste in itself because we will always end up, I suppose, with a bunch of things in our fridge. And, you know, guilty as charged, uh, been there where you have that little bag of mushy spinach or, you know, something like that at the like on a Friday evening you look at that and you're like oh I forgot to cook that again so we just buy too much and we don't necessarily plan properly so we end up just wasting money really so I find sustainability even down to a, a personal level is a fantastic way to uncover a bunch of cost efficiencies so definitely yeah. um, uh, you mentioned your your eighth or the rethink um, and and I suppose sometimes it can happen that if somebody is living like Porik is living in a more environmentally sustainable house, that sometimes it can change the way and make you rethink about what, in other ways, how can I be environmentally sustainable? So sometimes your, your living environment or the home you've created can change your mindset. Absolutely. I'm sure it feels great. We have solar panels here and, you know, that has triggered so much uh, in a positive way in the sense of like, wow, saving money tastes really good, right? So what else can I do? And you start thinking differently. It could be, you know, as I said, planning your meals. It could be trying to find a secondhand phone that works just as perfectly as a brand new one, but is probably like a third of the price or something like that. So, you know, it's, you start thinking differently and it's all about forcing ourselves. And I think this week is also a very relevant week for us to be talking about that. It's thinking about our consumption habits, really, like, why am I buying this? And, you know, we all want a better planet. We all want to leave this planet in, in great conditions for generations to come, you know, so it's asking yourself, you know, do your do your actions align with your values? You know, I often talk about the value action gap, which is we all want a better planet, but we end up 
just grabbing the plastic bottle of water because we're in a rush. You know, we don't bring our own from our own bottle from home. You know, same with the coffee cup as a very simple example. You know, so how do you align your actions with your values and start really thinking about those things, you know, um, taking your time and I suppose attacking each one of the areas one at a time to try and create those improvements, you know, as you go. Please, if we stick with the theme of sustainability, um, you believe that credit unions have a role to play in, um, I suppose, community wide in embracing sustainability, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And it is very much, um, you know, as you said, Greenify, it started amongst a group of credit unions and it has grown. And they are like minded credit unions who very much saw Greenify not simply as a loan product but as being part of Ireland and then within that individual communities led by their credit unions, their response to climate change and what we can do to address exactly what Pat has spoken about so eloquently, you know, how we can all make a difference. So this really is about credit unions playing their part and making a difference. And as regulated uh, financial organisations, where now it's coming from the top level and um, from Europe, from Central Bank about being part of um, ESG and our environmental, social and governance. Um, but this is something credit unions have been doing since their inception. Since credit unions were first established in 1950, it then came through the country in the 1960s. But our goals of democracy, of social responsibility, of cooperation amongst the cooperatives, these map so clearly onto the UN SDG goals. Um, and I suppose the fact that we have been appointed one of 26 champions this year, there's a clear uh, delineation. You know, it, it really is. It's a space for credit unions. It's somewhere where we've always been. But like many things that credit unions are doing, it's about now bringing it into this 21st century and for generations beyond. So I think it, it really works. And tell me a little bit more about that. You were appointed by uh, Minister Eamon Ryan as sustainability champions. What does that mean, Trace? It means um, that credit unions, that we are regarded as a fit for, through our community, through our works that we do, what credit unions embody, that we can champion and further Ireland's role um, within those sustainability development goals. And the there was a recent conference by Irish League of Credit Unions and that was very much to the fore and it is very much about what credit unions the tradition the values and Pat spoke about values and aligning your values you know credit unions we already have those values but it's bringing them forward and not just in the environmental space but in the social space and the governance space how we can work to our strengths and develop them further and be a champion for that and i think it's a very exciting time for credit unions you know we are more than willing and ready and able to stand up um, and rise to that call and while I have you there, Trace, a question has come in from somebody who works in the credit union. I work for a Greenify credit union. How can we look to promote Greenify among our members and what has worked well for Cavan Credit Union? Uh, great question. And actually one, and I'm really glad they asked uh, what has worked well, because one very simple thing that has worked very well is that we have partnered up in our community. It's with Hybrid Energy, but an energy company, they approached us initially. And um, so anytime they're promoting themselves or at events and talking to energy efficiency and what people can do, we're there alongside them. And likewise, if we have something. And then throughout, in terms of business, um, they will refer business to us. We will refer business to them. And, you know, it is that, like Pat spoke about the, the voice of one, but it's about, or the strength of one. It's always about multiplication. So if you're working to the same goal, if you can work together, it totally strengthens that. And that has really worked for us. And I know hybrid energy are in our area, but there are similar companies throughout the country. So I would say that's definitely partnership is, you know, has really worked for us. Okay, and before I, I just uh, leave you for, for a minute, th there's a little bit of confusion, so we need to clarify something that when we said that you don't have to be a member to avail of the loan, it's that you don't have to be a member to inquire about the loan, yes. but you do need to become a member to avail of it. Is that correct? Yes. 
it to you can apply for it, you can approach your credit union, inquire about it or that, but to draw down a Greenify loan, you must be a member. That can be done as part of the process, but yes, you have to be a member to get a Greenify loan. OK, OK, well, I hope that's uh, that, that's cleared it up. Porik, I'm going to go back to you. It was the heat pump and insulation were the energy upgrade jobs that you did in the house. Um, and I'm sure after all the work you put into it, um, you don't want to do any more work around the house, but it's a bit like childbirth. You might forget at some stage. Have you any plans for any other energy upgrades or is your job done? Uh, we're definitely not done, unfortunately. Um it's one of those things, it will always be something to be done. And even when you finish one thing, we find that it just makes something else look not as nice. And then you want to do something else. So one thing seems to lead on to the next, but sure, look, at it. it's, it's good fun. As I said at the beginning, I wasn't smiling, but we can we can smile about it now. Um, yeah, we are definitely, like we've had conversations, um, Pat mentioned about having solar panels there. Um, I know my own sister got solar panels in her home. Um, and it's definitely something that we'll be looking at um, in the future, you know, um, to see how we can be more sustainable. Um, you don't like to hear things about this 2030, you know, deadline for stuff. You know, we have young kids at home and we obviously want there to be a good future for them. So we definitely have to take responsibility. They can't, you know, do it, but they're unfortunately going to be the ones who maybe suffer the consequences of it if we don't do it. So it's definitely something that's um, on our agenda to try to be more sustainable. And um, so we are, yeah, we're looking at other stuff. Sort of down the line. You could be knocking on Trace's door again in the future then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Keep up the repayments then, Paul. It could be yes, nice. Yes, yes, <laughs> uh, Pat, I, I might come back to you, and it's one thing actually the Paul touched on that um this is a constantly evolving uh, area. And, um, you know, Porik is looking at other te technology or solar panels to improve his energy upgrade. And that's one thing about as climate change worsens and the effects of it become more severe, the tools at our disposal to deal with it um, are improving. So you can never sit back and say, I've done enough. Sure you can't. No, absolutely not. I even say that luckily we'll all be very getting really, really old. And one day when people ask us, what did you do once you knew? I'd like to think I'm going to have a list as long as my arm, you know. So you can never do enough. That's the reality. And you can absolutely start. Now you don't have, you know, you don't have to feel guilty that you never thought about it. You can start now. You can start where you are. We are all different. You know, we have different pocket sizes. We live under different circumstances. We have small families. We have grown up families. We live by ourselves. Whatever it is, we are all different. So start where you are, you know, face the challenges that you have. Don't be looking around at other people's challenges, you know, let, let them be. And, you know, try and figure it out, what works for your life, your lifestyle. I like to say that, you know, it's not necessarily about not doing things anymore, enjoyable things and, you know, the, the things that make, you know, our hearts smile. Um, it's about finding better ways of doing those things. So, you know, you enjoy shopping for clothing. Well, you can still do that, but can you go for second hand? Can you support the local brands? Can you buy less, but buy better? So there's several things you can do, and that's only a small example. So I believe that that's, that's the approach. And it's an area that you've been very involved in and for, as you said yourself, for, for 10 years, for a decade. Um, is there more of an appetite for it now? Are people embracing it more? Uh Absolutely. I remember at the very beginning, you know, um, maybe 13 years ago when I started looking into it like properly. Um, I remember looking for it on the newspapers, as I said, you know, before on TV and you would never find. And I always joke that I used to, to look at, you know, the planets burning the cover of the newspaper, page 49. And you're like, wow, priorities, huh? So now it's like page one, number one priority. We need to talk about that. And it's a daily conversation. There's no escaping, escaping it, I guess. So there's huge appetite. It's no longer just something for Earth Month, which is April. Uh, like I used to get hired for lots of talks on Earth Month. So April. And then silence. So now things are very different. You know, we, 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 we basically, I'm dealing with clients and like speaking engagements and whatnot all year round. It's very different. And I think the intention like that, that to me just shows that the intention behind what we do has changed, you know, from a tick in the box exercise to really like we, we have to get on board. 
so much so like there's regulation coming right there's no there's literally no escaping you know so for companies we have csrd coming in next year yeah for the big ones and then in 2028 we have the smaller medium businesses also having to report on sustainability so there's literally no escaping it so if you don't do it now you will have to do it eventually because regulation is coming after us uh, one thing trace that I, I learned um and it surprised me at last year's webinar is that um over 90 percent of houses in ireland um were built before 2000 so over 90 percent of our housing stock is um energy inefficient housing stock and that didn't matter so much when energy prices weren't particularly high but it matters a lot now so do you find that people who are coming in that the 50 customers that you had and um, who have aided the greenify loan um I suppose what's their why are they doing it is it to to cut the costs of, of their living costs to cut energy costs is it because they want to embrace living in a more environmentally sustainable way why do you think your customers are doing energy upgrades on their homes I'd say it's a combination of all of those and um, to be honest we're probably um might like to think we're all very climate conscious but it's probably the pocket first to be honest and mm -hmm. the comfort levels and I am one of those people living in a house that was built in the 1970s and is far from warm um, and like we are doing works to insulate it further and I suppose our concern is comfort it is not nice living in a cold house heating bills um, and then of course you know what you're doing for the environment and I think like Pat and Pork, it's been touched on, the older you get and, uh, you know, and the more that this is, and Stephen's webinar is part of it, the more the message is communicated, it does resonate, it does sink in, and the the parts begin to join up. So you're not doing it just for one reason, but, you know, together they all make sense. Um, and I think that's why Greenify has proven very popular. And I don't, you know, I only see that increasing. Your experience, Pork, in talking to you has been very positive um, in, in dealing with, with, with your local uh, credit union and in uh, availing of, of the Greenify loan. So if there was somebody watching this who was possibly considering undertaking an energy upgrade, what would you say to them? First, I suppose, um, get in touch with the credit union. I said step one and um, <clears throat> see what's available to you. Um, but like... As I said, it was definitely probably the easiest, certainly one of the easiest things we did on our whole journey, and we're probably still on that journey. But um, there was no hassle, there was no issues. So it was just all very straightforward. Everyone was very friendly. Everybody was very professional and very efficient. Um, so I suppose yeah, I looked to go for it. There's no, I wouldn't honestly, you know, I know, I know me and Therese, she's uh, beside me on the screen, but I'm under no pressure to say anything nice, like they were genuinely just were great to deal with, you know, they were, really were, so um, if anyone is considering it, just go for it. Great. Um, Pat, one thing that came out of your, um, uh, I suppose it was one of the main points you made in your presentation was the power of one, um, and I suppose it's important never to underestimate how powerful your own actions can be. That's right. Yeah. Like, absolutely. We, I, I often get asked, you know, like, oh, we're only a small island, you know, we're only like, what, 5 million people, give or take. Um, but we are 5 million people, give or take. We're more than, you know, just a small island. And as I said, you know, from my side, from where I stand, I want to be able to say that, look, I've tried a lot. I've tried everything I could. Um, because the other option is not to try, is to sit on our hands. And quite quite frankly, that's not a good option. Yeah. And that's a very defeatist approach to life. Uh, and I think that's the least, the, the last thing we really need right now. You know, we need everybody in. There's uh, another question and possibly our, our final question of the evening, and it's completely off topic, but I'm going to ask it to, uh, to, to you anyway, Pat, it's come in from uh, one of our audience. And I think it's okay to ask it because we're only two sleeps away from the Late Late Toy Show. So we can ask you a Christmas related uh, question, Pat. In the run up to Christmas, um, which is often a time of overconsumption, do you have any tips, any advice for being a bit more eco-friendly at this time of the year? Yes, I do. So I have a load. I don't know how much time we have. <laughs> we'll, we'll so I would say I'll concentrate on a few things, right? First of all, is really like make a list. Like the song would say, make make a list and check it twice. 
definitely make your list, you know, and that includes gifts. You know, can you, do you need gifts or can you offer experiences? Can you offer free time to a sister or a brother that just had a new baby? You know, literally print a little voucher and say, look, this is a weekend away. Off you go, I'll mind the baby. Uh, I think we're very, culturally speaking, we're very tied to the idea that Christmas is a time of a physical gift, but we forget that really, you know, you are just offering yourself, your time, an experience, a cooked a homemade meal, a cinema night, it could be anything. Uh, so that's certainly one. I would also invite you to rethink your food. 27% uh, of Irish people, according to the EPA in 2021, bought more food than they actually needed just in case people showed up at their doors. And we're all guilty of that because you know what? Everything looks delicious right now. Everything is covered in glazed, covered in chocolate. Like who doesn't want those things? Everybody does. But that means a lot of that food will end up in the bin. So once again, make a list, check it twice. If you think of your tree, you could go into, you know, renting a tree. There is a place in Cork that's Christmas tree. You can rent a tree, which I think is genius. Um, and then just don't get carried away with unnecessary things. It's about unlearning certain behaviors that, yeah, I get they were fun, but we can no longer afford that fun. I suppose we need to really think in a more pragmatic way, in a more rational way about what we're doing. And guess what? Our pockets will say thanks. So there you go. Well, they're great. Some absolutely great tips. And personally, if anyone who's buying me a present is tuning in any family members, um, yeah, the offer of, of a cooked meal or a bit of babysitting for a weekend away would be more than welcome. But thank you all uh, very much. That is all we have time for this evening. I'd like to thank you all for joining us. And I'd like to thank everybody for taking part in the discussion. A uh, particular big thank you to our speakers, Finbar O'Shea, Minister Jennifer Carol McNeil, Pat Kane, Trace Conway and Porik Cahal. And if you'd like to find out more about Greenify, you can go to greenify.ie. There is plenty of information there. So I'd like to say finally, good night to you all. Enjoy the rest of your evening and thank you very much for spending the last hour with us. <laughs>